Can you hear me? Find a pen really quick and then I'll be back. Hey, Michelle, when um, I think Mike Jacobitz is going to be running this meeting tonight. When he asks for the applicant, it's going to be the R. Ramey at Rockford. Okay. Just a FYI, I suppose. And the diagram will be the second to last page when we get to that point. So it's not an awkward angle. 
that your computer making that noise? Yeah, every time I hit Alt A or V, it makes that noise. <laughs> Turn it down. Well, I have to be here. <laughs> Uh, I thought that was my computer, and I'm like turning the volume down. I'm like, but I can hardly hear people talking. That that's I making know, it's a like loud ding. bling noise. That'd be a settings thing. It's just the volume on your computer. It comes through the speakers. Uh, how about now? Well, you made the sound, but it was less loud. <laughs> it's mildly better. You can't have everything, so. <laughs> yeah. That'd be a way to turn that off. Are you in your house, Greg? I am in my house. Yes. I thought you weren't allowed to do Zoom meetings at home. I, I'm normally no, but <laughs> since I haven't been home for two days, so I'm being given special dispensation to conduct this one. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. How's everybody tonight? I'm great. <laughs> Excellent. So, Jeremiah, did you want me to do any screen sharing? Um, are you going to pull up that map to talk through it all? Um, our administrative assistant has the packet. Um, so that second to last page has your, I hope is the updated one. Um, so when we get to that point, she can push, move to that and then you can discuss that one. Gotcha. Okay. Where is sound? Where is that? Taken control panel. Control systems monitor. Window, windows. There we go. We turn notification sounds off. Hey folks. Hey Mike. Mike. Hey, Marilee. You're, 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 you're muted.
You're still muted. You're just the other one. You're just vertical now. There you yes. go. That's it. Perfect. Jeremy, were we expecting Jerry Berg? Yes. Okay. We'll wait a few minutes. We're kind of stretching ourselves for a quorum here. I think that probably three out of the regular members being five constitutes a quorum. It, it does. Oh, and there's, there's Jerry. That takes that takes care of it. Okay, never mind. Folks, we have a quorum, uh, clearly have a quorum. Um, both our chair, Mike Perthold, and our vice chair, Cindy Bealey, have personal issues tonight, but both of kind of extraordinary circumstances that they will not be with us. Our bylaws uh, permit us to elect a temporary pro tem chairperson in the chair and vice chair's absence. And so before we proceed, we would uh, think maybe that would be a good idea. Sure. And Jer Jerry, you're muted there. Uh, if you have something to say, we would. Uh, if yes, no one, let's do it. Okay, if no one objects, I, I would entertain a motion to nominate any one of the four of us for the temporary pro chair pro tem. I nominate well, you. Me too, I second it. Okay, is there any discussion on the motion? No. Are there, any, noise. Are there any additional nominations? All those in favor of the motion, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we will call to order the October 6th meeting of the Adrian City Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, first item on our agenda is consideration of our August minutes. Um, board members, I presume you've had an opportunity to review those minutes? Yes. I would note that on the second page of the minutes, case number 20036, which was a dimensional variance request for 239 Pearl Street, that in the second line where it says 239 Cross Street, that should say 239 Pearl Street. With that correction, I move we approve the minutes. I second. We have a motion from Berg and a uh, second from uh, uh, Kleski. All those in favor of approving the minutes as corrected, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Um, folks, if you're joining the meeting, um, we ask that you, if you're not uh, an active participant, we ask that you mute your microphone. I hear there's some kind of TV or radio going on in the background there. So either turn that off or mute your microphone. <laughs> Thank you. The um, next item on our agenda is case number 20042, which is a uh, request for temporary use for staging area for the Meyer store remodel at 217 East 223. Um, I should note that this is on the Planning Commission's agenda for a site plan review that we will take up at the Planning Commission meeting and would ask that we limit our discussion here to the temporary uses, i.e construction equipment or structures or, or fencing. And with that said, um, is it Mr. Rainey? Yes, sir. 
Uh, I believe you're here to represent this project. And if you could very briefly tell us what it is we're asking relative to the temporary use. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, so uh, we are looking at staging some temporary containers and some uh, storage trailers to the site starting at the beginning of January to the beginning of July. Uh, and that's gonna be used for storage of materials for construction. Uh, so Meyer pre-purchases a bunch of um, any of their equipment, the shelving, the refrigerated container uh, cases, et cetera. And uh, they're not gonna ship everything to the site at once. It's more on an ad need basis, but we still do need some staging space because we're gonna keep the store in operation as we go. Uh, so as deliveries come in, we need a place to store that material. Uh, so I, I had assembled a site logistics. I don't know if we've got that available to pull up. I think it's coming up momentarily here. Sorry okay. about that. For some reason, Zoom kicked me off, so I had to just come back in. So okay. what page would you like? Second to last. To the diagram. Okay. So there is generally around 65 to 70 containers that we would utilize. Most of the area is in yellow. Um, these are 40-foot connex cans uh, that we would set on site. So as we get deliveries of material, we have a place to store those. So they're out of the elements and they're locked up um, and not creating any hazards. Um, generally, we fence around those areas so that way we can keep a division between um, any construction traffic and any pedestrians because safety is of the utmost importance for us. Um, additionally, in blue, you'll see our areas where we'll put dumpsters. Um, so we can bring refuse directly out of uh, the side um, exits in the building to any of those dumpster locations. Uh, we have some contractor parking. Um, I, I have a legend at the top if we want to kind of scroll up that just a second. That explains what the colors are. Um, so that kind of greenish, olivish color is uh, where we'd keep the contractor parking keeping the, the center mass of the store where the mo most of the pedestrians are going to be parking, any of the customers, keeping that open and available and not um, con congesting that with construction, traffic, parking, containers. We want to keep that spread out uh, away to minimize any disruption for construction flow. Um, and then we have some semi-trailers in the uh, lime green um, in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, that we would have on site as well. And these will flux a little bit. Um, we'll start with more, more semi-trailers and as we start to empty those out, um, those will gradually become less and less as to what's represented in this plan. So essentially it's just temporary staging for construction materials. Mr. Ramey, you mentioned that uh, you anticipate this being done by July 1st. Normally, when we grant a, a temporary use permit, we have a, a date certain for it being, you know, wrapped up. Uh, is July 1st a date certain, or do we need to allow for some, some uh, flex time there? July 9th is our uh, construction completion date. And then it generally takes us, uh, so that's when we turnkey. So that following week is um, when I think it would be safe to say that the containers would be gone. Should we, um, should we say like August 1st to be safe? Uh, that's plenty safe, yes, sir. Okay. Just, just out of curiosity, the, the white area that's labeled old pets, is that where my 15-year-old dog can be? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that's uh, inside the store where, where you can buy your pets products currently. Uh, we're going to carve a little space oh, inside oh, okay. the for a. I was really just kind of joking, but uh, okay. But yeah. no, um, we we're, we're going to create a, a temporary construction office inside the store, um, okay. and we typically try to outline that for the building inspector, uh, so he knows where to find us. <laughs> okay. Um, zoning board members, do you, any additional questions for Mr. Ramey? Looks good. Looks good to me too. We need to do, um, should, I should say, is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the Zoning Board of Appeals on this particular request? Uh, we need to uh, review the criteria for this review. Um, 
One of the issues we need to look at is the temporary use permit is compatible with the various provisions of this chapter. Uh, and it certainly appears to be so. Um, that the temporary use is a reasonable use of the land uh, com uh, compatible with the general plan land use designation and with zoning classifications. This area is zoned B4 as shopping center, which certainly allows retail use and uh, uh, certainly general commercial construction of a project like this. Um, that the temporary use will not impede the reasonable use of the land or the ordinary development of land. Uh, this is a large track and all of the construction appears to be well contained within the, uh, within the site. I don't see that being an issue. Um, that this will not affect, not adversely affect any adjacent uses or buildings or other structures um, other than the Myers gas station and possibly the tire man. Uh, this all seemed to be well contained within the site. The temporary use will not endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare. Um, I don't see that that's an issue. That provisions have been made for adequate traffic access and circulation, off street parking, and pedestrian safety have been provided. And it certainly seems to be the case here. Um, and based on the staff review of this, there are no additional conditions that they seem uh, that they deem necessary. Commissioners, if we wish to grant this temporary use, uh, it would certainly be within our purview. I would suggest that we set a deadline for it as of August 1st, so that we do have a, a date certain for it. And if there's any additional, unless there's some additional discussion, I would entertain a motion to that effect. I move. Is that Mr. Berg? Yep, I move for. Okay, is there a second? Second. Koleski, thank you. Uh, any additional discussion? No. Jeremy, would you uh, have a roll call vote for us, please? Yes. Commissioner Strayer? Yes. Commissioner Bird? Yes. Commissioner Koleski? Yes. Commissioner Jacobitz? Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Remy, we will get back to you uh, during the Planning Commission for the site plan review. Uh, thank you for being here. Is there any other business to come before the Zoning Board of Appeals this evening? Hearing none, uh, we are adjourned. The Planning Commission will convene in about oh, what, 12 minutes or so at, at seven o'clock. Thank you all very much for being here. Thank you. Thank you thank for you so being much. the chair. Thank you. Night. Bye bye. <laughs> Early. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome, Margot Love. Hey, Don. Hi, Mike. How are you? Oh, not too bad. You're heading up north tomorrow, you say? Up to the country that your wife describes as God's country plus. You're going, you're going to Marquette? Uh, Marquette, Houghton, oh. Lyrium, Copper Harbor, uh, the whole stick. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and, and she's given me instructions on what I should visit at various places. Okay. Well, you know, you may want to talk to Brian Watson. That's his neck of the woods, too. I already talked to Brian, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, and Sally, his mom, as well. Yes, well, the real, you so, mean the real expert. So I, uh, yeah, I, we're going to stay an extra week, I think, to be able to do all that stuff, you know? Seriously? Yeah, it has been a long time since I've been to the Western UP, like uh, maybe 68 years or so. Oh my, oh my, yeah. okay. <laughs> I was just a kid, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Should be fun. Yes, yes. The only problem is that COVID is going rampant up there right now. Well, yeah, there's four cases in the Keweenaw, you mean? I don't know. They're saying there's been a horrendous influx from... Uh, um, Summer folks? From, from Wisconsin. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. So all those, Pack all those Packers fans only know how to wear a helmet, not a mask. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. And we yeah. were we were face <laughs> masks. Yeah. I was just take it easy. Who said that? Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> oh hi, Michelle. <laughs> Are you a Packer fan, Michelle? I am. I'm going to leave the meeting. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, Dr. Love is on and he's not saying anything, but he doesn't have the baby with him right now. Well, oh, he's, he's, here he's we come. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We're, we're, <laughs> col <laughs> we're coloring over here. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. The baby is being played with other places. <laughs> I'm hoping I will not experience a dog barking interruption tonight because the one who okay. usually does that has an eye infection and is on painkill painkillers and antibiotics and is you know sound asleep in the corner so so you drugged your dogs for the meeting yes i did <laughs> but that's what dr love does for his children you know <laughs> oh boy I just think, I just think it's great that we have a diversity of ages in our in our group, and we love these beginning moments when we have children coloring or babies on the shoulder of dad, or whatever you know. <laughs> Nothing like learning civics at a young age. Yes, yes. yes. I was, I, gee, Don, I thought you were just referring to the vast disparity between our two ages. <laughs> You're referring to what, Mike? The vast disparity between our two ages. Oh yeah, yeah, you are <laughs> so much younger than I am, right? So. And you notice that our city administrator is being so kind as to not make any comment about our ages. Yeah, very <laughs> circumspect. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Watson is silent tonight. Yeah, he's quite busy. Yeah, hi first. Okay. Yeah, he's your eyes. I hide. Making one more pizza before he comes online. Yep. <laughs> Come in. Come in. Come in. Come in, Katie. Come in, Katie, so she can sit back. Come in. Okay, I'm coming in. Oh my gosh. <laughs>
Greg, I take it uh, that the, um, uh, I forget what we called it, but the online application for reporting, you know, blight or things Split like that, that, it has gone away. It has gone away. It's being replaced. I'm not sure Michelle can tell you whether it's been replaced. It is. So we actually have, it's now called a public service request center. And it's the pretty much the same thing as what C-Click Fix was. There's a map, you can choose your location, upload photos, um, submit an issue. And I'm working on that this week and I hope to have it ready to go probably by Monday. Okay, it, it's, not, it's not up yet? Nope, we're okay. still working on it. Okay. I just got the, um, the police department done today and so I'm moving on to everybody else. It was, it's a little bit different setup. Okay. Um, so I'm kind of working through that, but it should be the end of this week or early next week. Girl, you're a jack of all trades or a Jill of all trades there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be up on the website though and I'll send out a separate press release about it as soon as it's live, so. Okay, thanks. Yep. I presume it doesn't necessarily mean a quicker response time. <laughs> that is out of my control. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I was down at the clerk's office yesterday, uh, turning in my spoiled ballot and getting a new one. I managed to fill in all the little little bubble spots with a magic marker and it bled through. <laughs> you are not the first person that I've heard that happen to. Well, you know. That's, it, the, it, that's the first person I've ever heard of that happening to. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> a magic uh, marker? Well, Robin tried to tell me, she said, well, it says on there, use, use ink. And I said, well, what, what is a magic marker, but ink, you know? <laughs> so where were you during a civics class, Michael? Well, when I took civics, that it was probably about the same time you were when you actually voted with a mechanical machine and you moved the little levers from, you know, right to left. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> which were pretty infallible. I mean, I realized they broke down on an occasion, but they were pretty infallible. You know, there weren't yeah. any hanging chads yep. or mismarks or... Mm -hmm. They were. Uh, Interesting times. Yeah. Some of us can remember them, some can't, you know. There's Gordon in his home library. <laughs> Hello. Hey, Gordon. Actually, I think that's a wine cellar with uh, front markings. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Right, Gordon. <laughs> if you just become better friends with me, you could come over and have a have a glass or two. Have a bottle, okay. <laughs> you know, those book racks, they kind of slide and what's hidden behind, I can't even tell you what's hidden behind them. <laughs> but I, I think Mike's got the same thing going with his. He's got sliding bookcases. But except mine is not a virtual background. <laughs> oh, this oh, is okay. a real background, I, I that's right. Actually, Gordon, I can actually go over here and, you know, take a book out. That was. Well, okay, so I took a, what can I tell you? I took a picture of my library and I turned it into a virtual. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that, that's I great. In, you know, I live in one of those old houses on State Street. They've all got exactly. rooms all like this. Exactly. And thank goodness this is all being recorded for the, for the sake of our citizens in the future. Oh yeah, exactly. We're gonna put it in the city's time capsule or, or, or something, I, I'm not sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a quorum. This is good. <laughs> yeah, that it's good. There's Dr. Love. Yeah. And you're not holding a baby. You have to pan the camera just a little bit to see it. No, now we're in bath time. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Dr. Love, I hope we don't see a picture of you in the bath. No, not oh, mine. God, no. Oh, jeez. Oh, please, not that. 
I like my dental license, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, the clock on the bottom right-hand corner of my computer says it's seven o'clock. Uh, and we have more than enough for a quorum. So we will call to order the October 6th meeting of the Adrian City Planning Commission. Uh, first item on our agenda is consideration of our September minutes. We've had two meetings in September. Uh, the September, September 1st minutes. Um, I would ask for your consideration. Um, the only correction I saw was on page seven. The word Kiwanis is spelled K-I-W-A-N-I-S. Were there any other additions or corrections to the September 1st minutes? Right there in about the sixth line from the bottom. That should be. Uh, you know, I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at doesn't Bob Benke have an H in his name? Yes. Just, uh, let, me, let, me, let me pull out my chickens in town brochure here and see what it says. Yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's got an H. Yes, it does. B E H N K E. So, okay, two corrections in that same paragraph there. Kiwanis, K-I-W-A-N-I-S, and Banky, B-E-H-N-K-E. -E. Any other additions or corrections to the September 1st minutes? If there are none, we would entertain a motion for their approval. I would move approval with the corrections as noted. Support. Support from Dr. Love? Yes. All those in favor of the motion, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Was that an opposition? No, Every, okay. Minutes are approved. The September 24th special meeting minutes. Any additions or corrections to those minutes? Hearing none, we would entertain a motion for their approval. Move to approve. Krista, thank you. Support from Taylor. Taylor. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Those minutes are approved then. Next item on our agenda is case 20021, uh, a zoning exception uh, application and site plan review for 1561 West Maumee Street uh, for a marijuana dispensary. Folks, um, as I recall, this we discussed this at our we had this actually on the agenda at our july meeting and we tabled it so we would need a motion to untable it move to untable. untable taylor okay support of motion by taylor support from love all those in favor of the motion to untable please indicate so by saying aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed okay before we get too far uh, uh, into the nitty gritty here, um, I, would, I would ask that we take the zoning exception discussion first prior to the site plan review. And as you may note, with both this and case 20030 are uh, both the zoning exception permits for things related to marijuana. I'll take a quick minute to review what we needed to consider uh, for a zoning exception permit. Um, the zoning exception permit allows a development or use which is listed in the ordinance but has been des designated as a special exception. As such, these uses are generally considered as compatible with the other uses in that zoning district but require special review to ensure that they meet the specified requirements and that they're appropriate for the specific property for which they are proposed. Um, I'm going to take a minute to review for the commission and the public the requirements for a zoning exception permit. We will then hear from the applicant they can tell us whatever it is they would like to in support of their application. Commissioners may act, ask the applicant any questions they may have. We'll then take comments from the public that relate to the application, either for or against the proposed use. Uh, we will review any comments received from the public, either via phone or mail. And we will then close the public hearing and the commission will discuss the application. As we consider an application for a zoning exception permit, there are both general and specific criteria. In general, does the proposed use meet the specific requirements, which we'll get to as we discuss the specific applications. 
Would the granting of a permit have an adverse effect on the environment or the value of surrounding properties? Is the proposed use compatible with the adjacent and surrounding properties? And is the proposed use consistent with the city's future land use plan? As we look at uh, the specifics for a, um, a marijuana dispensary, um, we need to consider, does the facility hold a valid license from the state? Have, do they have or will they, have they applied for a permit from the city? Um, will it be within the, the um, would approving this be within the number, within the limits of the number of such centers we can have within the city? Um, cannot be within a thousand feet of a school, private pu or public, or, uh, including preschool through college, but not including sports facilities or other accessory uses not located on schools, educational campuses, and cannot be within 250 feet of any of the following uses, a church or house of worship located in a residential district, a public park or playground, a state licensed daycare facility, a facility that provides services for substance abuse disorders. Um, it cannot be on a site budding land zone for single family residential use. It may not have a drive through, drive up or curbside service. Um, and that's pretty much it. And with that said, um, we'll ask if there's someone here to represent uh, 1561 West Maumee Street. If, you, if sir or ma'am, if you would identify yourselves and very briefly tell us what it is you're proposing to do. Yeah, hi, how you doing? My name is Steve Barnstable. I represent uh, Barnstable Realty. Uh, we are we are hoping to uh, to open up a, a medical marijuana facility there. Uh, we uh, at this point right now we we own the majority of the plaza, so uh, all of the changes that have been requested, uh, you know, we're uh, easily able to make those at this point. Mr. Barnstable, excuse my interruption, but just to to jump back to our meeting in July, one of the issues that we had and the reason it got tabled was that we weren't able to fully establish who had control over the property and, and the ownership and that has now been done so. Yes, sir. Uh, as a matter of fact, we've actually acquired uh, two of the other units and, and uh, Barnstable Realty owns the majority of the shares in there right now. Okay, I, I'm sorry for interrupting, please continue. No, uh, that was uh, pretty much it. So again, you know, we're, we've been, you know, kind of, uh, you know, waiting and stuff like that. And we, we, you know, we tend to fully comply with all of the requirements that the, that the planning and zoning folks are there. We've already taken, started taking some of those steps. Uh, and we're just really look forward to uh, moving on in the process and really appreciate all your time as we kind of learn some lessons on plaza management. <laughs> Um, you do have a license from the state for such yes, a sir. It, yes, sir. I have a pre-qualification from the state. I also have an open facility or an active facility license up in Traverse City. And I also have pre-qualification from the state for, uh, for a recreational uh, as well. Okay. And you either have or have applied for a permit with the city? Yes, sir. I've applied for, for both of them uh, within the prescribed time frame. Okay. Um, one of the issues that we discussed at uh, when we when we reviewed this uh, back in July uh, was whether or not it was within a thousand feet of Adrian College property. My understanding is that we have a uh, administrative ruling on that, and that the the um, outcome of that was that um, the property that was in that is close to being a thousand feet or just under a thousand feet is not part of the primary campus. Um, and that is, it is not term, the, the term is educational campus. I'm sorry, Greg. Yes. Okay. Um, and it is not within 200 feet of any of the listed uh, facilities uh, that are prohibited. Um, commissioners, any questions for Mr. Barnstable? Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the Planning Commission on this particular application for a zoning exception permit? Hearing none, uh, Jeremy, did we receive any comments either by mail or by phone on this particular proposal? No, Mr. Chair, we did not. Okay. Um, With that said, we would close the public hearing portion of this discussion. Um, unless there's some objections from commissioners, I would suggest 
that the uh, um, criteria that we re that I just reviewed prior to this discussion uh, that this application meets those criteria. Move to approve as presented. Mr. Support. Watson. And who was the second? Taylor. Mr. Taylor, thank you, sir. Um, Commissioners, any additional discussion? Hearing none, uh, we would entertain a motion for approval of the application for a zoning exception permit for a marijuana dispensary at 1561 West Maumee Street. A motion from someone. Motion to approve. Thank you, Krista. <laughs> Is there support? Support. And Mrs. Weatherby, was that from you? I think so. Okay, thank you. Nod yes, yes. okay. Um, commissioners, any additional discussion? In which case, could we have a roll call vote on the site plan application, please? Yes, Commissioner Watson. Commissioner Johnson. Not here. Not here, okay. Commissioner Cotton. Yes. Commissioner Gauss? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Commissioner Jacobitz? Yes. Commissioner Love? Yes. Commissioner Weatherby? Support. Motion passed unanimously. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. On the same topic then, as long as you're still here, Mr. Barnstable, we will move yes. on to the site plan review for that same property. Um, and I see we have that up on the screen. Um, Michelle, go down one more page. There we go. Thanks, Michelle. Perfect. Uh, staff has reviewed this uh, in, in detail. And in fact, maybe if I could ask, call on, on uh, either Greg or Jeremy to review for us the staff findings on the site plan. You want me to go, Greg, or do you want to? You can go. Um, can you end it, Michelle? Sorry, what's that? Can you zoom in a little bit so we can see the actual site? Um, so working with Mr. Barnstable and Mr. McLaughlin um, has been fine. They've done everything that we've asked. Obviously, we had um, issues with a tenant. They, I spoke to them recently. The dumpster, I believe, um, Steve, you can tell me if I'm wrong, is supposed to be moved here very shortly. Um, and they're going to be putting the new one in. Um, they've put street trees in to match the adjacent um, marijuana facility that was put in to keep that aesthetic going. Um, the only things that staff noticed that we would like is for that drive in the rear um, to face um, going west instead of east. It just would flow with traffic better. Um, and other than that, with the dumpster being moved and the traffic, there was no other issues with their site plan as presented. Yeah, we have, we have plans to do both of those. We've already uh, scheduled out the, uh, the actual, uh, actually we have somebody out there today who's measuring up uh, and then we're going to get the lines painted as, uh, as soon as possible. Great. Excellent. Commissioners, any additional questions for either staff or for Mr. Barnstable on the site plan? Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the Planning Commission on the site plan for this facility? Hearing none, um, Planning Commissioners, we would entertain a motion for approval as the site plan, uh, approval of the site plan uh, with the only I think we already resolved all the conditions, but just to be clear that we would remove all enclosed dumpsters from the property uh, and all trash handling equipment would be placed in the proposed enclosure as shown on the, on the diagram. And the route for travel for traffic south of the building would be in the westerly direction and appropriate signs and pavement markings provided to indicate this. Like I said, would we have a motion to that effect? Move to approve, watch. Support, Cotton. Thank you, and I appreciate I appreciate the name IDs. 
Commissioners, any additional discussion? Hearing none, uh, we would have a roll call vote for that motion, please. Commissioner Cotton. Oh, I'm sorry, what did you say, Cotton? Yes. Yes. Commissioner Gals? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Chair Jacobit? Yes. Commissioner Love? Yes. Commissioner Weatherby? Support. Commissioner Watson? Or passed unanimously. Okay, thank you, Mr. Barnstable. Best of luck with that project. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you very much to everybody. We really appreciate your time and your patience. Mr. Chairman, if I could make a comment, I would like to. Please. Yes, Mr. Goss. Um, I just want to thank Troy and Steve for their perseverance in moving their project forward. You know, it's been a long, arduous process for them. Also want to appreciate the efforts that Administrator Elliot and Jeremy have put into helping them make this happen. Um, this, one, this one's been difficult for everybody, but I, I can see what, you know, everybody working together, making these projects come to fruition. And I appreciate everyone's efforts. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and I'd also like to second that, uh, you know, Jeremy and everybody, everybody was really great and, you know, kind of helping us along in the process and, and, and stuff like that. And we really do appreciate it. And, we can't wait to, you know, m make our home in Adrian. We also have uh, two other businesses that we're going to be bringing in, and uh, we just we just want to make West West Mommy a, a great a great place to go to shop. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is case number twenty o forty three, which is the site plan review for the uh, Meyer remodel uh, that we just discussed briefly in the zoning board meeting. Uh, this is at 217 East 223. Um, I kind of expected Mr. Ramey to still be here. Is there someone to speak to this? Uh, yes, sir. My name is Mike Johnson. I'm with Paradigm Design. We are the architects for this project. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Um, my understanding is that uh, there's not any additions going on to the building, but this is mostly a, a change in the facade traffic patterns and the approach to the drive through pharmacy. Um, but with that said, could you again tell us uh, what the plans are? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, that was primarily correct. Um, <clears throat> we are going to do a full, uh, well, almost a full facade reconstruction on the building. Um, however, it does involve some additions to the building. Um, what we do is we remove the existing entries that are kind of recessed into the building and we add on what are, uh, what are the prototypical new glass entry towers um, that uh, mirror what happened on brand new Meyer stores. Um, so those glass towers get built out in front of the existing building along with some cart storage spaces as well. Um, so we have glass towers being added. We have uh, some, some brick additions on the side of those and the brick is going to match the existing brick. Um, and then as you mentioned, uh, we are uh, redoing the pharmacy drive-through currently. It is a one lane drive-through on the front of the building and we are relocating that over on the, um, on the east side of the building there and expanding it from one lanes to two and then covering both of those lanes with a new uh, canopy to protect uh, people using the drive-through from the elements. Questions, commissioners, for Mr. Johnson? I noticed that uh, staff has reviewed this and that there are no comments or conditions from their recommendations. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the Planning Commission on this proposed site plan? Hearing none, uh, we'll go to Commissioner Consideration. I, I, as I said, I, uh, I don't think there were any staff comments. Everything seems to be in order for this site plan to be approved if we would so choose. Move to approve Watson. Support Taylor. 
Thank you both. Commissioners, any discussion? Looks like a nice project uh, with needed improvements. I, I noticed that the, the congestion at the pharmacy drive through is a thing that needs to be addressed and this looks to take care of it. And some much needed uh, traffic control issues in the parking lot, it sounds like too. So. Yes, yes, we've worked with Jeremy and, and uh, I, I believe we've addressed all of the initial concerns with that. And um, yeah, yeah, and I believe uh, that we have a really good plan going forward here. Um, I, did have, I did have one point to make and this might be directed to, uh, to, to Jeremy. Um, all of our uh, discussions up to this point have really been about uh, what is happening at, at the main store. Um, one thing that, that hasn't really been brought uh, to your attention, um, but, but that is shown on the site plan is <clears throat> a small addition to the gas station that is planned as well. And you can see it right there um, oh. on the screen. Um, uh, given that we haven't discussed this previously, I just wanted to ask if this, if this could be uh, considered now or if we should um, you know, carry on that conversation at a later date. Is this, um, this was included in the plan? Yes, this was included in the site plan that we have. Mm -hmm. And is that, the, is that the addition in the, well, both to the north and to the southwest corner? Is that? Yes, so, so the plan there is um, uh, fleet-wide Meyer is, uh, has a new initiative where uh, at their convenience stores, they want to do away with their uh, single one stall unisex restroom. And uh, they are expanding the gas stations now to include separate restrooms, multi stall restrooms uh, for, for men and women. So what this, uh, what this reflects here is a, a small addition off the back of the gas station for those two restrooms. And then at the, uh, what would be the Southwest corner <clears throat> the existing building has a notch in it and the entry door is at the 45 degree angle. Again, this is uh, standard uh, across the fleet. Uh, when we do remodels, we, we go in and we infill that, uh, that corner to square off the building. Um, it just makes the, makes the traffic patterns uh, and, the, um, and, the, and the staff uh, attendant counter there work much better within the store. Um, Jeremy, were you aware of this and was this part of the staff comments? So I didn't see this. Um, it wasn't part of the staff uh, comments. I'm getting my internet connection unstable if I cut out for some reason. Um, this page shows the traffic island that we had discussed um, and maybe they had put this on there. Um, I don't see an issue with it. Um, if, you know, Greg might be able to jump in if he does. Um, you know, every, everything else seemed to be in order. Uh, why don't, I would suggest that we could approve this uh, as presented, but contingent upon staff's review, additional review of the uh, gas station uh, additions. So move. Support. Okay, that was Watson and Taylor. Uh, commissioners, any uh, discussion on the original concept or on the, the contingencies there? Hearing none, um, the motion is to approve the site plan as presented uh, with the condition that the additions to the gas station are subject to uh, staff review. And if there's no additional discussion, we have a motion in support for that and we will have a roll call vote, please. Uh, Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Commissioner Gauss? Yes. Commissioner Cotton? Yes. Chair Jacobitz? Yes. Commissioner Love? Yes. Commissioner Weatherby? Support. And Commissioner Watson? Four. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. Mr. Johnson, best of luck with that project. Very good. Thank you very much for your time. And, um, and I will look forward to reaching out to uh, Jeremy about uh, the review of the gas station. Very good. Thank you. Next item under agenda, under old business, is case number 2030, uh, a zoning exception in site plan review for a marijuana growing facility and dispensary at 1139 Treat Street. 
this was, I believe, tabled at last month's meeting. And so in order to be technically correct, we would entertain a motion to remove it from the table. Motion to remove. Uh, motion from Cotton, support from Taylor, it sounded like. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, we will take first the zoning exception uh, portion of this. I've already reviewed the criteria for a zoning exception permit for a marijuana facility. Um, is there someone here to represent this project? and briefly tell us what it is you're proposing. Anybody? Jeremy, do we know who we were expecting to be here for this? Uh... Um, I emailed the applicant and Jeremy Pickford. I would have assumed that they were there. Um, oh, I'm not seeing anybody on the screen here. Anybody that wishes to represent BPC Ventures, speak now. Um, Yeah, I just checked. I sent them the uh, information at 920 this morning. Usually we, have, we do it day of. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little hesitant to move forward with this without uh, the applicant being present. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I, I think especially sure. since staff is not making a recommendation on this one, uh, we have reservations about it. Yep. It would probably be best to table it again until... Yes. Uh, there could be a representative present. Okay. Well, I'm sorry for us having untabled it <laughs> in that case. And would entertain a motion to retable it. Motion to retable. Uh, motion from Taylor and support from Love, it sounded like. All those in favor, please indicate so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Um, we have a discussion item, uh, Dominican Sisters Solar Array. Is there someone here that wishes to speak to that? Um, Mr. Chair, that was, that was a discussion I was looking at having. Um, sorry, my cat is being um, ridiculous. Um, so Dominican Sisters wants to put in a solar array specifically just for their you're breaking up on us. Am I? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, but it doesn't match your lips. <laughs> oh, that's that's okay. It never does. So, uh, <laughs> um, so Dominican Sisters was gonna do uh, discuss having a solar array, not for farming purposes, which is what I considered it possibly have been. So maybe we could do a um, amendment to the ERO district to have that, but they're not gonna do it as a um, farming situation. So what we're gonna do is a uh, um, site plan with them as a um, accessory to their building. They wanna just use solar to be more green. So you'll be seeing that probably in three to four months. Um, um you know, our ERO is kind of wide open. You can do a lot of things there. We don't specify all of the uses that we do permit in ERO. Uh, and that's what we came to the conclusion of. So it, this was just, you know, tentative, in, it, just in case we had to go that route. Um, but we didn't, we came to the conclusion. Um, I spoke with them, they're gonna get a site plan ready. And as soon as that's ready, it'll be in front of you. You, so. you said that it, it wasn't intended as farming. I'm not quite sure what, solar arrays have to do with farming? No, power um, generation, solar farms. So oh, some people okay. can just farm it and sell that, that power. Um, uh, so it so, wasn't my thought that they were, but possibly they were, because it's pretty large solar arrays they're doing, but then uh, again, they have a large campus, so. Is this something we need to address in a more general sense? I, I, I don't see that there's that much open land in the city that this becomes a big issue, but. 
Correct. Where, where people do solar farms are typically, um, you know, 600 acre sites and larger. Uh, it's not economical typically to do them on smaller sites than that. Now that said, I have seen around where I live uh, currently, um, DTE has, has some that they've done kind of as infill uh, back of the cemetery uh, up on U of M's campus. So it does happen and it might be something you want to consider if you feel like there's an issue with that. I, I mean, they are structures and so they would have to meet the setbacks like any other structures uh, that would be located in uh, whichever zoning district uh, they might be in. I, I think until it, until it becomes a big issue, I think handling them on a, like this, a case by case basis probably is fine. But I think closer to home too, if you go down Occidental by the uh, veterinary hospital there, they have, that's a solar farm behind there. They sell that power. Um, oh. that, that's actually pretty much the size of what Dominican Sisters is going to be putting in in two locations. So, okay. Thank you. Is there any other business to come before us this evening? Mr. Chair, I just have a quick question. Mm -hmm. With regards to the Treat Street discussion, I know we tabled it and then untabled it. Anyway, um, so I, I'm sure we all appreciate the consternation that staff had over what to do with this property. Um, and I'm not sure, but maybe over the next month, you can give us a little bit of guidance on how we might approach this because I find it to be a troubling piece of property where somebody's trying to do good and I'm not sure about the other half, how much good they're trying to do. Um, I don't know. I'm just anticipating we may have issues trying to get all parties to agree to that. Maybe I'm wrong. And I agree with you, Don. And it comes, it's the same thing that we just had with the piece of property on Maumee Street where that, that, that's a little different in that it was a condo association, yeah, right. but yeah. we're also out here trying to clean some stuff up. And if this is our opportunity, this is our opportunity. And unfortunately it's to the detriment of maybe these other people, but that Brady sand and gravel needs to follow the rules. And I yeah. don't know if it's a matter of just getting Glenn out there to enforce the rules or the building inspector. I don't know what it, who it would be or what it would be to get the netting up and get the fencing straightened out. Um, it doesn't seem like it's a very big to do big project or expensive project to get that in compliance, but somebody right. needs to do it. Yeah. I, I, I just well, sense, I'm sure we all did that. There wasn't a true feeling that everybody's going to be in compliance here. So. Well, and, and as you guys said, this is our opportunity for leverage. Yep. And, and so that it sounds like what I'm hearing in for, for staff's benefit that we may be disinclined to approve this unless we have some guarantees of compliance. Well, I mean, what I would say is that the, the site plan, I think, achieves technical compliance for some of those issues, right? They're putting up screening that would be required for the outdoor storage that's associated with A.J. Brady. Uh -huh. the, the problem that we struggle with is the concept of it, right? You're putting what is essentially a, a commercial operation in the, middle, in the middle of an industrial site and a pretty dirty industrial site at that. And, uh, you know, that we, we don't think the, the concept of it, the, the, the idea of renting this spot in the middle of that site and limiting um, the improvements to the, the, the sort of commercial level of improvements to that one little postage stamp of land that's associated with that use and then treating all the rest of it around it as industrial uh, even if it's compliant with the industrial standards is a very good concept. And we've expressed those concerns to the designers uh, and the applicant over and over. And we've gotten the result that you see in front of you tonight. There's okay. In your packet. And well, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of an, like, to me, it, it's kind of a spot zone type thing. It's not, it technically isn't, but it, it's kind of a, mm-hmm. 
it, it's kind of a, a half, you know, a half and half. It's not technically a spot zone, but that's pretty much what we're creating. But well, it, their lack of participation tonight also indicates some yeah. lack of commitment too. So, and, and that's that's the frustration there that staff is experiencing. I think mm -hmm. I can say that for them. I'm sure they are, as are, as are we. So, uh, and I don't know how. How do you incorporate ownership of the property in all this process? Is there a responsibility for the owner to make sure that both parties do what they're supposed to do? Well, the, yeah, the owner is ultimately uh, responsible for the application. It's made on behalf of the owner with the permission of the owner. And of course, the owner is the one who's decided which land to lease, which land not to lease, and to whom. You know, it's a right. mixture of uses issue, and, and these two uses don't mix well together. I mean, they, it's possible the applicant didn't appear tonight because they have separate issues with respect to the timing of um, their, uh, their marijuana license. You know, all improvements, those, those who have been licensed a long time, which they have, uh, were supposed to have been done and occupied by a a date this month. I don't recall the exact date. Uh, the city attorney would have to tell you. But uh, we're now some licensees who could not meet that date are now entering into consent agreements uh, with us. I signed a couple of them today to pay daily fines until they can open. I don't believe this was one of them, and I, they you know I don't know. They they may have given up. I don't know. I think I look at it this way too. Um, there's some marijuana companies like 1033 Lao that we had that went above and beyond what their site plan even said. Mm -hmm. I think when I first took this position, I was, you know, at first told just keep going as we were. And so, you know, their site plan was prior to me. They came back with some slight improvements, but when I went out there to do the inspection, it was far beyond what they said they were going to do um, and I think if they can do that other people can do that too they can improve these sites because they care about our city not just themselves and well, I think and all, what we you know, want to, to back up what Jeremy is saying so many of both the particularly I noticed it with the provisioning centers but the large-scale production facilities are are you know model um, model facilities mm -hmm. And there's no reason we shouldn't expect that from all of them then. So, and I think that can be said for you know Troy and Steve too. They, to their you know they they did everything that we asked to improve those sites. You know mm -hmm. we want street trees just to beautify the city. They had no issue. Yep. You know, there's there's some groups that are happily able to improve the city and they love to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's some that don't. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, have we heard anything from Giffels Webster recently on uh, well, comprehensive plan? I will opine to Mr. Well, they had asked us to promote the their virt so-called virtual open house, and we went through it today, and we were not happy with that product. And uh, I reached out to Rod and Joe. I have not yet heard back from them, but I asked them to come in. I think they have to actually come in to City Hall, and we have to put that up on the screen and go through it. Uh, page by page. It's not functional in my estimation, uh, particularly is not functional on a mobile device, which is where most people will try to partic participate in it. And so it needs to be improved before it's reasonable to put it out there uh, for the public. Some of the things that the links in the public participation piece were not working as they should. So it's, it's just not ready. Well, I, I visited it t today. Apparently, it was it was available uh, from the city's website. Uh, I think. Oh, I hope not. <laughs> um, I don't know. Do we have that on our website? Maybe, no. Maybe Jeremy, I, not that Jeremy, I'm aware Mike, of. Mike asked me for an update, so I gave him a glance at okay. it. Okay. So and it was you know, not on the site. Yeah, okay. yeah don't share that. I, I didn't remember how it was. I got there, but but one of the things is those. It, it's one of those cloud surveys, you know, where the which I think are just absolutely ridiculous 
and useless in terms of gaining any kind of useful information. Uh, if you pass that on to the correct, <laughs> well, you know, you know what kind of thing I'm referring to, where you know you name two words in response to a question, and then it comes up with what words were used the most commonly. And I, I just think that is absolutely useless information. Well, yeah, I mean, that's a public engagement technique that you would typically see at an in-person exactly. event like that. And they're trying to recreate that virtually because of our inability to gather. Uh, but yeah, no, we want to look through all those things and make sure they're functional and appropriate before we publish that. Okay. Um, anything on those two um, um, PUDs that have that we've heard from in the last few months, like the old runaway tire and the and the pump company. On we have not heard any more uh, from the artists that wanted to go into the runaway tire building. We did meet uh, about a week ago with uh, the prospective applicant for the uh, Garfield School site, and believe she's moving forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And this uh, Friday, I'll be meeting with Drake Lally about his too. So. Oh yes. Okay. We'll have that one. Um, I'll get a better understanding of where he's going and how we're going to end up with that one. That, that's an exciting project, but I think he's biting off an awfully, awfully lot there. <laughs> but <laughs> he's been very responsive, so I have high hopes for it. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Taylor. I would just point out that uh, although I'm not a frequent uh, Facebook person. I did notice a Facebook post from the person who addressed us about the Lenaway Tire facility, and he was promoting it as just what he was talking to us about, as if it was going to happen. So, uh, well, my understanding is that he closed that he either closed or is about to close on the property. But well, that may be the case, but we certainly haven't approved the PUD. I don't believe, no. unless I was sleeping during that meeting. Well, that's not outside the realm of possibility either. Well, thank you very, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. <laughs> okay. Any other business to come before us this evening? If there is none, we're getting ready to adjourn here. And if there isn't any, then we are adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for being here. Commissioner Roberts, nice to not entirely see you, but <laughs> <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Hey, there she is. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have All a good right. evening. Good evening. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. You're welcome. <laughs>